What's up? Hi, my name is Eric. I am a nursing student, but before all of that happened, I was a personal trainer. I graduated with my Bachelor's of Science in Kinesiology. I had my certified personal trainer through the National Strength and Conditioning Association, and I had another bunch of certifications that you probably don't even care about. But in this video, I wanted to talk about the reason why I kind of decided to add on to my letters after my name, right? Um, and there was a bunch of reasons, there was a bunch of personal family reasons that I don't want to talk about here. I'm talking, I'm, I'm here mostly to talk about the business aspect of things that I saw that I didn't really resonate with, right? So here's the lowdown. I was really good at programming. I was really good at training people. My program prepared me for that. My program at Cal State Long Beach is really good at really preparing you to train people. Um, they bombard you with hours and hours of required internship. So ever since I got into the program, I was already in internships and even before I learned how to train people, I was already in a, a, a spot to shadow trainers and learn how to train people, right? Safely, effectively, and science-backed training. Here's the thing though, just because I knew all of the science doesn't mean that I'm going to be good at selling a personal training package. And also, just because I had three, four years of experience as an intern doesn't mean that I will be really good at being my own boss, essentially. So what happened was after I graduated Long Beach, I <laughs> accepted a job offer from a gym that is very, 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 very bougie. It prides itself with uh, great education versus trainers but also <laughs> with high turnover rates with those trainers, but also the highest pay, right? It, it, it just prided, prided itself with like the highest pay cap. And I think this is where I made a miscalculation or an overestimation of my abilities. Now, the reason why I say this is because this gym caters to a bunch of high profile clients, people that are CEOs, people that are business owners, people that are like entrepreneurs, people that could willingly pay $300 for a gym membership, right? So these people are the ones that I'm trying to sell a personal training package to. Now selling is something very, very, very new to me. We had one class on selling. We had one class on business. I don't even think we had a class on selling. We had a class on business and it was an online class. So on that end, I fell behind. I was scared. I was like 22 jumping in to the deep end trying to sell personal training packages to these like 40, 50, 60 year olds who are essentially difficult clients to sell personal training packages to because they see me as a young kid. Now granted like I was I was doing fine like my numbers weren't bad. So I really didn't like the aspect of selling right. I didn't I saw so many people that needed the help because we do functional movement screens that we, we do like, you know, honestly for me, it was the movement screens. I didn't really care about, you know, the body mass index. I didn't care about the body fat percent. Yes, I do care about it some way, but if you're not moving properly and you're training, it doesn't really matter. Like you're not going to get the best results, right? So I cared most about the functional movement systems that I saw and the, the movement scores that I saw were just not the best. I would say... 90 to 95 percent of the people that I saw needed some sort of program, right? Um, and for someone that like me that wants to help everyone, it's kind of hard to be like, hey, you know, like I want to help you out, but management's gonna get on me if I don't sell a program. So it's kind of like a fine line to like balance it out, and it just didn't stick with my like my personal mission at the end of the day, my vision for myself, the idea that I'd have to put my ability to help other people behind like this price point, it's kind of just painful for me because yes, I, I need to pay my bills, but I also want to help people. Like seeing people that I can't help just hurt every single time, right? So for me, the transition into nursing was kind of like, it was seamless because yes, I get to help people that are in need um, and that I can care for people that are in the hospital. So it's not like I'm going to be like, hey, you need to pay for this care. I get to take care of people, period. I don't have to worry about like all the other stuff. <laughs> That's another person's job. That's it. Now, the, the, the company mentality was actually great. I felt supported. However, it still didn't align with my vision. I saw people working their butts off. 
I saw people that are like on the top of their game, but then when I asked them about work-life balance, <laughs> sometimes it just wasn't there. And it wasn't the work-life balance that I wanted to have. I always saw my mom, you know, work like two days, three nights, or three nights uh, in, of her shifts. And then like the rest of the week, she's, she's spending her time doing her own thing, right? That was cool to me. I was like, wow, that sounds fun. As a trainer, you kind of don't have that freedom until you develop your own clientele, right? But even then, you still have your schedule is at the mercy of your clients. You get paid it based off of like how many sessions you do. So financially speaking and long term thinking, I was like, man, I don't think I want to have that type of like schedule because I saw like what my mom can do with me. And how, you know, how many times we've traveled throughout the year without her having to worry about like, oh, I have to train X amount of people. All she had to really worry about was, was what's her schedule like and then when can we go and travel and like go to Vegas for like a weekend or something like that. Go to like Arizona for a weekend. So it, it, it was like the traveling aspect of it too was there because I'm a Sagittarius and we love to travel. So realizing that, you know, this might not be the perfect job for me was part of the reason why I left right it, it I realized that the work-life balance wasn't the one that I wanted to have so I was like hey there's other options that I get to do so I took control of it and I was like hey I'm gonna apply to nursing schools and bam got into them started them and here I am now almost done in like 21 months so I guess the moral of like what I'm trying to say here is like just because you're in a spot already doesn't mean you have to stick to where you are if you're feeling like it's not serving your bigger purpose, right? Yes, it's great that I was in one of the top gyms in, in, in the business that like, you know, people wanted to work there because they make the most money, right? Yes, it was great that they trained their trainers well, that they educated their trainers well. But at the end of the day, there was something missing for me, right? So I decided, you know, I have the opportunity to do another you know career why not like who said that you can't do something else after graduating with a bachelor's and then after you work at a company who said that you have to like stay at a company because you know you started there there was like no there's no rule book on that you you it's your life you get to do whatever you want right so that's 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 kind of like where I'm trying to get at. It's because through the through that journey, I was able to realize like what my actual mission in life was, my actual purpose. And honestly, I wouldn't have it any other way. Like I still want to own my own gym in the future. I still want to help people move better and feel better. And through nursing, I'm going going to be able to actually support that, fund that, and even probably make that into a nonprofit in the future, right? Because it, I, I know that I want to be making income as a nurse while paying off my debt, duh. but also giving back to the community, giving back to the people that, you know, that need the extra help. Like, why not? Why? Like, if I have that ability, it just made, it just makes sense. So stay, staying where I was, it didn't make sense to me because I was like... I, at the amount of people that I saw at the top of their game with the amount of money they're being paid but the, um, the, the amount of time that they, they're, they're spending, it just didn't align with what I want to do in the long run. It's, it's, not, it's not right or wrong, it's just it's not what I wanted to do in the long run, right? So once I figured out what can benefit me and help me serve others, I just decided. It, that's all there was to it. It, it. it wasn't like, oh my god, the managers were so horrible. Da, 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 da. Like, no, it wasn't anything like that. It was just realizing that, realizing that my purpose is something else, and then following that instead of staying at a place where I know I'm doing half of what I can do. Anyway, so that's kind of like a little bit of why I left personal training. It's there really wasn't a lot of bureaucratic stuff that I, I was unhappy with. The manager supported me, they loved me. They were like, yeah, here's a, your employee of the month, here's a t-shirt, you're a star, cool. They, like, they were all really supportive of me and I was the youngest trainer there when I first started. And then like, I think six months later, another trainer became the youngest, but I was like, you know, 
they really did try to mold me into a really great trainer. However, just didn't work out. So sorry. I mean, yeah. So that that's kind of like my story for that. Um, I wanted to have a story time because I didn't get to post a vlog. The, last week was actually really intense. Uh, last week, preparing for this week and the week after um, is intense. So uh, I'll post those vlogs when I finish them and if I have even more clips. But yeah, thank you guys for watching and uh, peace.